Shalom, Pastor Hawk, coming back at you with this truth. Giving all praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah by Hashem, And I'm going to entitle this video Will Israelites Have Slaves in the Kingdom? From the Bible Commentary. Anyway, um, a simple, straightforward uh, title. And um, in saying that, precepts are coming up to your mind. Maybe uh, Revelation 13 and 10, maybe uh, uh, Isaiah, the 60th chapter, maybe Isaiah 61, verse 5. You know, the, 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 how can I say, the, uh, the, front, the, the foundational scriptures on slavery should come to mind. So we know that, you know, we know, the, we know those scriptures. Anyway, what I did was I said, because normally I go to the Bible hub and I go to the commentary, right? So I put in Isaiah just to see what the mind of these so-called Bible experts say about, you know, scripture. So I said, I wonder what, what their thoughts or commentary on Isaiah 14 and 2 is, which Isaiah 14 and 2, we all know by heart. It says in the people, the first verse says, the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. So we know the subject matter um, ultimately is for the most high to uh, lift up the, uh, the sons of Israel. Okay, so, and then it says in the second verse, and the people shall take them and bring them to their place in the house of Israel. Now we know that the house of Israel is referring to the two kingdoms coming back together. Shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives whose captives they were. Now you can say, oh, well, the Babylonians put us into captivity. So this would mean that we, we will in turn put the Babylonians into captivity. Well, that didn't happen because the, the Persians and the Medes or the medial Persian empire took over the Babylonians. And um, so you can't be in slavery under a kingdom and have your own slaves. In other words, you can't have another nation under slavery while you're enslaved by a nation over you. So this is yet to happen. Um, happen. It says, uh, and they shall take them captives whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. So we know we didn't we know that Israel coming together, the two kingdoms coming together and enslaving the Babylonians never happened. So we know it's not talking about that. It's a, it's a general. Well, when you read further down, we know that it's talking about the daughter of Babylon, I mentioned Babylon. We know it's not talking about ancient pagan Babylon. And the rulers of the daughter, the daughter of Babylon are the Edomites. So they're the ones that's going to go into captivity, but they're not going to be alone. They're not going to be alone. Everybody that enslaved us shall in turn be enslaved. And that just makes, that's called justice. You know, Esau talks about how he believes in justice. Uh, they, uh, the Edomites post slavery. They were hanging a lot of Jakes because of uh, basically the, the excuse was, oh, this black guy raped uh, one of our white women. And so they, they said they had to hang this guy and then hang a couple other Negroes to, to set an example and burn down some houses you know, just not get the guilty guy, which he, he most likely is not guilty. 
you had a lot of Edomites that had a thing for Jake men back then. So it was always, almost always, I'll say always consensual. Because why would this so-called white woman be in this position by herself? Doesn't make any sense. Unless she made herself be alone to get with this Jake. So you're not going to be alone, you Edomites in the kingdom, but you're going to be the one with the biggest boot up your ass, so to speak. Anyway, so I went to the commentary, right? This is, Cam I always go to Cambridge Bible for schools and colleges first because it's the shortest one. And I was surprised to get these precepts, right? It says second verse, and the people, and peoples, Isaiah 49 verse 22, shall possess them. So who shall possess who? The Israelites shall possess them. The nation that oppressed you, had you in the slavery, right? It says serve themselves heirs to them. Now, this is Leviticus 25, verse 46. It says, and you shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you to inherit them for a possession. They shall be your slaves forever. But over your brothers, the children of Israel, you shall not rule one over another with rigor. So now let me let me take this out and copy it and paste it. So that's a law. So I'm in the blue letter. Let me uh, go up a couple of verses. Okay, I'll go up uh, one verse. Go up one verse. Verse. 45. You know what? Let me, let me go up another verse. Okay. So slavery is in the law. It says uh, Leviticus 25, verse 44. Both thy bondmen and thy bondmaids, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen, the other nations that are round about you. Of them shall ye buy bondmen and bondmaids. That's slavery. It happened in the past. Every nation that took down, or every kingdom or nation that took down another nation, they put those people into slavery. And that's just a fact. And it really has nothing to do with being wicked. It's just an order of things. The reason why one nation takes down another nation is to put them in slavery. They don't take them down because they care about them. It says 45th verse, moreover, of the children of the strangers that do sojourn among you, of them shall ye buy, and of their families that are with you, which they begat in your land, and they shall be your possession. And ye shall take them as an inheritance for your children. And the American slave trade that we suffered when you were in slavery the slave mass allow you to you know a man would get a woman sometimes the slave master would pick the man the slave man 
fit deal with a certain woman and for them to have, you know, have sex and for them to have offspring and then those offspring are born into slavery. That's Deuteronomy 28 uh, chapter. As a matter of fact, let's go to that. And that's the law. That is the law. So when they talk about, about us, the stuff that we, that we speak, speak on, will we back it up with the scriptures? Okay, so let me open up uh, another tab. Oh, this is this chick, the best of Brittany, uh, what's it, Gr Griners. Well, she's like almost seven foot tall. She's a, she's a mo. you know, she's married. I don't know if she's married to an Edomite. She was over there in, um, in Russia. Now, if you're playing ball on a high level as a professional, you supposed to know the laws that are over there. So she put herself in a bad spot. Anyway, that's a whole other subject. Let me just open up this blue letter. And um, let's go to Deuteronomy 28. I'll start at the 31st. Well, oh, you know what? Let me read the 29th verse. Deuteronomy 28, verse 29. And thou shalt grope at noonday as a blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoil evermore, and none shall save thee. Thou shalt grope at noonday. Let me look up the word grope. Mashash. To fill, to grope, to grope, to fill over or through, grope, to fill through, to grope, to fill. In other words, if the lights go out, Let's say there's a blackout, blackout, and you're in your house. You kind of know your surroundings, but you're going to feel and touch. Okay, there's a wall over there. Okay, this is the bathroom. So that means to grope. Now, when it says that you shall grope at noonday, and this is Esau's noonday. This is Esau's height. That's when he's going to be brought down. Uh, uh, Job, uh, uh, Job twenty. When he when he began to eat. So this means Jake groping means that you're looking for the answers. You're looking for the truth. And you and you go to the Baptist church. You go to Islam. You know Jake. Be, you know, embraced uh, the so-called nation of Islam because they a lot of them got tired of the Christian black church or the Christian church. There were no answers for them. So they became uh, more uh, radical in their thoughts, you know, because the mantra was the white man's the devil, you know, do for self, you know, and so forth and so on. So they went from the church and from the church, because I'm, I'm going to say this about the nation of Islam. The people that came, that went from, that, that became members of the nation of Islam were all Christians. Were all Christians, whether they were Baptist, Methodist, whatever. And the reason why they left is because the Christian church didn't have answers. You went into a church, you saw a so-called white Jesus. And in the nation of Islam, they teach you that Jesus is black, a so-called black man. So that's groping. You were over there, you were in the church, 
whether it be Baptist, Methodist, whatever, and you said, I don't feel it, and, you, and you're feeling for something new, something better, something with answers, so you touch Islam, and then you go into that. A lot of y'all went into that. A lot of, a lot of Jake stayed in Christian. And then you got Christians that are Baptists. Then they say, I ain't with the Baptist church no more. I'm going to be a Methodist. And a Methodist might be a Jehovah Witness or a Seventh-day Adventist or a Protestant. See, I grew up as a Protestant. And um, as a child, you know, your mother, you know, which was more of a, it didn't have a nigga vibe to it. It was more Edomites and it was more read, open up the scriptures, let's go into the laws and so forth. They, the Protestants were more of a, that's a, more of a studying background, not no dancing and singing and acting a fucking fool, right? But um, so so you had Jake went from Baptist to Methodist, from Methodist to Protestant. Maybe they lived in a a higher middle class neighborhood, so they became Protestants or whatever. And now you have the whole Israel Israel thing, and where the the majority of the Israelites come from? What they come from the Christian Church. Baptist, Methodist, Protestant, whatever, because they already know the scriptures. You know, Galatians 1 and 6, not another gospel. Same scripture, same gospel, but it's broken down differently. You look at the, you come into Israel, you look at those scriptures that you looked at when you were a Baptist differently now. And now you have Israelite, so many Israelite groups out there with their different doctrines that you're groping. You got this happened to us, this happened to uh, the IUIC, ISUPK. You have guys that started the ISP, you, ISUPK, and then they go to another group or GMS, then they go to another group, and some just fall back into the world, go back to being a Baptist. So that's us uh, groping at noonday as a blind group within dark, darkness. Anyway, let me read on. It says 30, verse 30. Thou shalt betroth a wife. They showed you in the uh, roots, mandingo, <clears throat> the movie Drum or Drums, I believe it's Drum, 12 Years a Slave, Birth of, the, uh, birth of a Nation. They showed you that a scene where uh, you had a, a Jake man and a Jake woman got married. And a short little Edomite grabbed her up because he was going to get first dibs of the woman. And then after he pops the slave woman, now you can go ahead. Would show you that this man is nothing but a fucking devil, a, a, a false Christian. I'll look, look up, uh, do some research on uh, Jonathan Edwards. He was, he was a famous... Uh, Theologian, he was a pro I believe he was a pro he was a Protestant. He was a Protestant that lived uh, what was it the eighteen hundreds, and he had actually had slaves. He was speaking against slavery, but he had while he was speaking against slavery. Guess what? He had slaves, and he was dealing with the, a, a young slave by the name of uh, Venus. Now, if you if you had looked it up. Maybe five years ago, it actually says that in Google. You go to it now, it doesn't say that. But it does say that he had three slaves. Leah, an older so-called black woman. Uh, a, a, a young man, I believe his name was Titus, if I remember, if I'm not mistaken. And he had a 14-year-old girl named Venus. Like I said, they don't tell you that he had relations with that girl. But if you go back, five years, six years, and go to Google, it tells you that. So they actually went in there and took it out. So my question, if Vocab Malone is watching, is Jonathan, Ed, Jonathan, Jonathan Edwards, is he burning in, in hell? 
He's this famous theologian. It says, thou shalt betroth a wife and another man shall lie with her. They showed you that in the movie, Birth of a Nation. And there was a scene with Gabrielle Union. So this, this, the slave master looked at Gabrielle Union and said, oh, she looks good. And he just grabbed her, did what he had to do. And then, then, he, then, he, said, then he said to uh, the slave woman, okay, you can go deal with him now. That's another reason why this place is going to be destroyed. It says, thou shalt build a house and, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard and shalt not gather the grapes thereof. Now there's a, there's a precept in Amos 9 where it says, the plowman shall overtake the reaper. Who is the plowman and who is the reaper? The plowman is you. It represents you that are out there in the field working as a slave, and the reaper is the one that benefits from the crop. Whatever it is, corn, wheat, whatever it is. So it says the plowman, which is a slave man, shall overtake the reaper, meaning there's going to be a, a turning around. I'll use that term. And this, this, this clown, Vocab, he'll go into the book of De uh, Deuteronomy 28, and every verse, that ain't talking about black people, ain't talking about slavery. That's talking about the Assyrian. Uh, when you read these curses, it's not just talking about one time. It's talking about when you went under the Assyrians, when you went under the Romans, and, and around about the 50th verse or so on down, when it speaks about they shall eat their children secretly in the siege. It's talking about the Roman siege, 70 AD. And then, there, and then there's other parts where it's talking about now, currently what we're going through now. In the morning thou shalt say, would to the father, the power, it will be even. And in the evening thou shalt say, would to the, the power, it was morning. Meaning, I hope I make it to this next day you know you get up to go to work or do what you got to do you're praying that you make it home and then at night you're praying that you wake up the next morning because this this is a well it's been going on for a while you have police that bust in your door you know early in the morning there was one guy that got shot up and it, and it was a wrong they were looking for this is the wrong guy that they shot and Esau can just do that, man, with impunity. There's a term, um, what was the term? They say it all the time. Uh, damn, the word immunity is in it. But anyway, they can actually break the law and go to the judge and he'll use that term. So basically they have a license to kill. Thirty-second verse. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. That happened any time a nation took us over. So this is not one time. It happened when the, when the Babylonians took us over. It happened when the... Uh, uh, the Assyrians took the northern, the, the northern kingdom over. It happened when the Greeks took us over. It happened when the Romans took us over. And it happened, and this time, the reason why we're here in this country is because we came over here to serve, our foreparents came over here to serve slavery. It says, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people and nine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thy hand. Because if there was a family, and they showed you that in 12 years a slave, where they had families on the auction block, and uh, one slave master might have just wanted a girl, a little girl. 
So they would buy it, but they wouldn't buy the mother. Then you have cases where, okay, I'm gonna buy the whole family. Or I just want the mother. So you're left with the father and his children. And then the father might be sold to another. Then you got so-called, so-called good slave masses that would take the whole family. Oh yeah, they're really good. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put the whole family in slavery in, in my plantation. See, you're gonna have to pay for this. You reap what you sow. The most high is not mocked whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. The plow man shall overtake the reaper. And they shall bring them into captivity. And uh, they shall um damn. Let me go back to it so I can read it verbatim. And the people shall take them in their to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and them handmaids, and they shall, this is what I want to say, and they shall take them captives who captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. Who are oppressing who, who are the people that, that are oppressing, um, that, that's oppressing us right now? The last oppressor, which is Esau. He's going to be first in line to go in captivity. When you go to uh, uh, Psalm 83, the first name on that list are the Edomites. So the Edomites are still here. You know, I know that they're still here because they got to go into captivity because they put us in captivity. Thirty-six verse, Yahweh shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Now, guess what? We, we know that this is talking about America because we knew about the Babylonians. We knew about the Assyrians. We knew about the, uh, those, all those, those where we lived, where we dwelt in the Middle East, in the Levant. They knew about the Egyptians. They knew about the Babylonians. They knew about the, uh, the Persians and the Medes. You know? Now, when the Romans took us over, we didn't know them. They came in and, and, and you know, they came in and, and annexed the land. And they made us uh, pay tribute. And then the next time we went into captivity under Esau was... Uh, when they went over to the Africa's west coast of Africa and grabbed us up. This is America. Deuteronomy 28, verse 36. It says, Yahweh shall bring thee and thy king. Now, who is, who is thy king? Thy king is King David. So, the King David going to captivity in America, you got them right. He was a slave. He was out there in the field. If he acted up, he got hung up on the tree and whipped. That's what this scripture is talking about, this precept. Yahweh shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. And guess what? We knew about the Romans. All you got to do is go on the first Maccabees and second Maccabees, it tells you about Rome. So we knew about the Romans. We knew about the Greeks. We didn't know, we didn't know about, we didn't know about uh, America. It said, and there shalt thou serve other gods wood and stone. Now we know that this is not talking about the, the Roman captivity because they let you serve your power as long as you paid them tribute. So what does it mean by and so serve other God wood and stone? That's talking about these churches and that's talking about these idols and these graven images and these pictures of Caesar Boger.
Now this right here is a kicker. I'll go, uh, I should read 47 verse, but I'm gonna go right to the 48 verse. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord Yahweh shall bring against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in the want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron, not a yoke of wood, upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Yahweh shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift. Now, ultimately, the end of the earth was what? The other side of the earth. We, we were, we were over, over there in Africa, and you had Edomites come from as far as the west, the west to come all the way to the east to West Africa, because West Africa is in the Eastern Hemisphere, not the Western Hemisphere, all right? That's Esau coming in them slave ships. And um, they had what was called, and I did a video on this, called a triangle, it was called a triangle trade. It wasn't called necessarily called a triangle slave trade because they didn't just, when they left from Europe, they went from Europe with goods, they went down to Africa, to, to exchange those goods for slaves. They took the slaves, which was Jake, to America. They sold them in bulk. Then they took other goods and they took the goods back to Europe. That's why it's called the uh, triangle trade. If you look it up, you'll, you'll see it. As a matter of fact, let me go to that right quick. I'm not going to put in triangle slavery. I'm going to put in triang triangle trade. Uh, triangle trade. Triangle tr uh, trade. And there you go. Images. Let me hit images. They left from Europe with goods. They went down in West Africa, traded the goods for slaves. They went to the Americas, dropped the slaves off. They took other goods and they went back to Europe. So it was a, a cycle. It was a cycle. Now, when you get the reference to it, let me, let me do this. Let me bring it back. Okay, like I said, I did this in a video, previous video, not too long ago, maybe about a month ago. It says about a triangle, let me do this. Triangle trade, triangle trade or triangle, triangle trade is trade between three parts of regions or regions. Triangular trade usually involve when a region has export commodities that are not required in the region from which it, from which its major imports come. They ain't telling you about the slavery part. Okay, let me, okay, let me read this. What were the three parts of the triangle, triangular slave, a tri triangular trade? This is three stages of the so-called triangular trade in which arms, textiles, and wine, they sold a girl for wine that they may drink, was shipped from Europe to Africa, enslaved people from Africa, West Africa to be exact, which were the Israelites, to the Americas, and sugar and coffee from the Americas to Europe. But they're not going to pay. But they're not going to pay. 
uh, vocab, but tell you if you quote uh, Revelation 13, 9 and 10, well, that's not talking about what you guys are talking about. Anybody that listens to this clown, you can, you can go down with them. So anyway, let me come back. Give me a second here. The evidence is overwhelming that we are the people of the Most High. The, the, the spirit bear witness that we are the children of the Most High. Okay, so it says, uh, uh, serve themselves, heirs to them. And it says in this passage right here, the heathen, they use the word heathen and he used the word strangers. Now, I'm going to give you three more precepts. It says Isaiah 60, verse 10. Let's see what that says. And the sons of strangers shall build up your walls. Sons of strangers are the other nations. And their kings shall minister to you. For in my wrath, I smote you. He's talking to the Israelites. But in my favor, which we're getting ready to be favored right now, we've been the most high. There's levels to getting out of uh, captivity in the kingdom. We're doing a lot better now than we did back in, uh, I don't know, 1801. Let me go back to that. But, but in my favor, have I had mercy on you? Now, you really got to read the whole Isaiah chapter 6. That's a beautiful chapter. That's a breakdown right there. 14 verse. The sons also of them that afflicted you shall come bending to you. That goes hand in hand with Isaiah 14 and 2. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were and they shall rule over their oppressors. Let me read Isaiah 60 and 14 again. The sons also of them, of them, the sons also of them that afflicted you. In Isaiah 14 and 2, it's oppressed you. The sons also, or the people also of them that afflicted you shall come bending to you. And all they that despise you, hated you, shall bow down themselves down at the soles of your feet, and they shall call you the city of the Lord, Yahweh, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. And even that's in, uh, what is that, uh, Isaiah uh, 45 and 13, I believe it is. It's talking about the Ham Hamitic. Uh, people, because you got these guys, Sarnetta and them, teaching this stuff about, so you, got, you, you, you ain't got no love for no Africans. Motherfucker, the Africans ain't got no love for us. The hell are you talking about? And the most I'm going to deal with them guys because they received the truth and they, and they came up against it. This is uh, Isaiah 61, verse 5. It says, in strangers, the other nations, shall stand and feed your flocks. And the sons of aliens, strangers, other nations, shall be your plowmen and your wine dresses. It says the plowman shall take overtake the reaper. We're going to make them the plowmen. Plowman means, matter of fact, let me do this. Let me do this. Let me take Isaiah. I just want to look up the word plowman. This is just basic information before leaving earth. Bible. Okay, so let me see. Let me see. Plowman. I want to look up the word plowman. Plowmen. Plowman. Plowmen. A car.
Ooh, I like this. I like this. It says plow man, husband man, farmer, working the land. What did they have down south when we were in hardcore slavery? They had plantations. What is a plantation? A big stretch of land. They made their, they became rich from cotton. Cotton was one commodity and other things. Uh, it says, it says, uh, it says plow man, husband man, farmer working the land, yet not owning any of it, yet not owning any of it. Why? Because we were slaves. We didn't own any of it because we were working for the band. We were slaves. We weren't even working. You were slaving. And, and he had to feed you so you can keep working. If he didn't have, if he knew you, if he knew you, he didn't have to feed you, he wouldn't have fed you. He would have you just sleeping out there on the field and just work you 24 hours a day. Esau had, had, has enough sense to know that you need rest, that you need food, that you need shelter. When it gets cold down there, don't get too cold in the south, but it does get cold in the south. I've been in the south, and it, get, it does get cold down there. Not, not like it does in the north. But recently, you've been having ice storms and tornadoes and snowstorms and whatnot. So let me do this. So I can close this right now because these little handful of scriptures that I brought out, it, it says it all, man. There's no way you can get around this vocab, Malone. I want to see. Okay, aim, uh, not, it's, it's not in Amos 9. Let me go to Amos 9. Amos 9. Amos 9, verse 13, behold, the days come, say of Yahweh, that the plowman, let me, let me click on the word plowman. The word is a different word. So let's see what it, what it means. Karash. Okay, it's a different meaning. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. 27, let me come back. 27, 90. The, the, the definition is a little bit different. Let me, let me deal with the word reaper. Let's see what reaper means. Quartazar. Okay, it has something to do with harvest. So, the word should be an actual guy that that uh, digs the ground, plows, and then at the f fullness of the harvest, you re you reap something. Which means the plowman is a slave. The reaper is the one that benefits from what the plowman does. So there's going to be a, a a role reversal. They're going to be the plowman, and we're going to be the reapers. Okay, so they told the truth on this, but they also 
they also gave you, uh, they also put in uh, Judges 5 through 12, which started at 11. Okay, awake, awake, uh, Deborah, awake, awake, utter a song, ar arise, Barak, and lead your captivity captive, you son of Abin Noam. Lead your captivity captive. Okay, let's see what it says in one of these other commentaries. Because Cambridge was straight, straight up with it, man. They said it's talking about somebody going to be in somebody that enslaved somebody else is going in and turn. They're going to go into captivity. None of these other commenters are, are saying anything about that. Okay, so, okay, Jameson Fawcett, a Brown Bible commentary, kind of says the same thing. Oh, my goodness. It says captives, not by physical, but by moral might, the force of love. Oh, my goodness. And regard to Israel's God. And it says Isaiah uh, 60, verse 14. And we read that. Let me go back to it. So we're not going to enslave them in hate. We're going to enslave them in love. The sons also of them that afflicted you uh, shall come bending to you. And all they that despise you shall bow, them, bow themselves down at the, at the soles of your feet. That's, that's talking about slavery. They're going to bow down because we're going to be in the power seat because we're going to have the power. Anyway, um, let's go to another one dealing with slavery and captivity. Uh, let's deal with, what is that, Leviticus? Is it Leviticus or Exodus? I believe it's Leviticus 21 and 16. Let's see if that comes up. And the Lord said unto Moses, speak unto the, I'm sorry, 21 and 16. Let me do this. Okay, so it says, Maybe it's Exodus 21 and 16. I believe it's Exodus 21 and 16. Wait a minute. Let me, let me go to the blue letter. Let me go to the blue letter. Okay, maybe it's Exodus 21 and 16. I believe it is Exodus 21 and 16. Okay, and he that still is a man. Okay, that's what I wanted. Exodus 21 and 16. Just to see what they got to say. Isaiah 14, they were pretty much on point. Oops. You come back. Exodus 21, 16. Okay. 
It says, and, and he that still the man and selleth him, or if we read about, we just spoke about the uh, triangle uh, trade and part of the com commodity were men, men and women, and he that uh, stealeth the man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, we are in his hand, hand meaning power, he shall surely be put to death. It says Cambridge Bible for schools and colleges. Let's see what it says. Uh, it says man stealing. Deuteronomy 24, verse 7. If a man be found stealing any of his brothers of the children of Israel and make merchandise of him or sells him, then that thief shall die and you shall put evil away from among your brother. Now, at that time, Esau was our brother, so Esau stole, stole us and sold us, so he's got to die. It says, uh, where, the, where the present law is merely expanded and recast in Deuteron Deuteronomic phraseology. Okay, they, they're playing games on this one. Okay, let's try Benson commentary. Exodus 21, verse 16. He that still the man, whether he keep him in, in his own hands or power, because it says in Deuteronomy 28, and they shall have no might in their hand. They, have, they shall have no might. Their children shall be given in, to another people. They, they shall have no might. They shall have no power. So the reason why Esau has us to this very day, because he has power over us for his own use or sell him. Uh, still, it is a, a theft of a heinous kind. And the man stealer, which in this case is Esau, any other nations, but the, the main nation, the nation that has us now in, in, in their power, in their clutches, are the Edomites. Deserves death. It appears from uh, 1 Timothy 1, 9, and 10. Let me look at that. Knowing this, that, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and the sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of uh, fathers and mothers, uh, of mothers, for, for murderers. Well, that fits Esau to a, to a T. But, they, but, but they're, they're basically saying they, don't, they shouldn't be put to death. They shouldn't go into captivity. It said that this law was not meant to be of a merely temporary nature, but of standing force. Oh, so they're telling the truth. So they said this law is going to come to pass. Um, it says the following offenses were to be punished with death. Striking a parent, compare Deuteronomy. It's not going to come up. It says cursing a parent, compare the, the marginal references. Kidnapping, and that's what Esau did whether with a view to retain the person stolen or to sell him, compare the marginal references. And this is what Esau did in the, um, the triangle trade. Commodities were brought from Europe to Africa. Slaves were brought from, from uh, West Africa to the Americas. The slaves were dropped off. And there was more commodities that were picked up to go back to Europe. So you were just a commodity. That's why they stacked you the way they did. So you, you devils got a lot to pay for. 
The scriptures also say give them du double. It's a kidnapping, whether with a view to retain a person or to sell him compared to marginal references, right? Now let's look up the word kidnapping because we were kidnapped. Kidnap definition. Kidnapping. The action of aborting someone and holding them captive. The action of abducting someone and holding them captives. They shall take them captives whose captives they were. We were kidnapped and they're going to be kidnapped. And the authorities are not going to come looking for them because we're going to be the authorities. Let me go to uh, Daniel. I'm getting ready to cut this short. I'm not going to go too long with this. And there's so many more precepts. <laughs> there's so many more precepts on this subject. There's so many uh, ways uh, to go with this. Let's go to let's go to Daniel seven. We'll start at the ninth verse. I'll try to read this quick, quickly. Ninth verse. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. By the way, let's go back. Daniel 7, verse 7 is talking about the ancient pagan Roman Empire. And then it's talking about the new, the, the, the rebirth of the uh, Roman Empire, which is uh, America, NATO, and the EU. NATO is being mentioned, and the EU is being mentioned a lot since this uh, war, invasion, whatever you want to call it. Annexation, annexation which means uh, one nation take over another nation. That's how empires are built. They annex other lands by force. It's so how I considered the horns, and behold, there came among them a third, a little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up. That's uh, the little horn represents America. It's not, it's not talking about, uh, this doesn't refer to uh, Antiochus Epiphanes, which sounds like it, like these commentators would say, that's Antiochus Epiphanes. Based on the next chapter, which is chapter eight. Antiochus Epiphanes is mentioned in chapter eight of the book of Daniel. This, is, this little horn is not talking about Antiochus Epiphanes because this is after, this is not talking about after the Greek uh, rulership. It's talking about after the Roman rulership. It said the little horn is America before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up. They had the, the, uh, the Revolutionary War. These were the 13 colonies, original colonies, fighting against Great Britain. And that was, a, that was a fixed war. It was a fixed war. The British could have wiped them out. But the reason why they won is because the Most High was with it. And the Most High had manipulated the minds of these Edomites in power to allow them to, to win. Because they... They're still kissing Britain's ass, okay? It's, uh, so the, the next two was uh, the French-American War, which was the middle of this country. And then the, the, the next, which was the West, uh, was in Florida and uh, Texas, all parts of, uh, uh, you know, uh, the Spaniards. You had the Spanish-American War, the French-American War, and the Revolutionary War. So that was the buildup of this nation, Babylon the Great. 
Why was it built up? Because the Most High set this place up to be a prison for the children of Israel. It said before a little horn, another little horn before whom were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots, meaning they were out. They were out. They had to go back to France. They had to go back to England. They had to go back to Spain. It says, and behold, in his horn were eyes like the eyes of man and a mouth speaking great things. We're going to go to the moon. We're going to do this. All the great things. Are, we're going to teach the whole world about democracy. And the reason why they're backing up the Ukraine, because they're backing it up in the name of, the, well, that's a, democ a, a, a democracy. Russia is not a democracy. That's a democracy. We're not fighting for U Ukraine. We're fighting for democracy. This guy, Meeks, that congressperson of, from New York, he said that. I said, the ancient of days reigns. I said, I behold till the thrones were cast down in the ancient of days did sit, uh, whose garment was white as snow. He had a garment that was a color white. And the hair of his head like the pure wool. He had an afro. His throne was like the fiery flame and, the, and his wheels as burning uh, fire which represents a gigantic ship. Remember, this is a vision. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand, thousands ministered unto him and 10,000 times, 10,000 stood before him. The judgment was set and the books were open. This is the destruction. This is judgment. This is also in Revelation uh, 19, Revelation 20. Esau calls the great, the Christians call the great white throne, the great, white throne judgment and behold and and beheld them because of the voice of the great words which the which the horn speak america they're talking shit they were more stout than their fellows i beheld even till the beast was slain and the beast represent nato and the eu and ultimately america america was a woman on the beast which is also a part of the beast and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame and concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion. The rest of the beasts was who? The Babylonians, Medio Persians, uh, the Greeks, which are Edomites in a different kingdom. But they were still around. They're still around here. The descendants of those people are still here. So, which part of those kingdoms are not going to go into captivity? Their descendants. Because we're going to take over the whole world. Uh, as concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away their power taken away because we're coming into the power. Yet their lives were prolonged for a season of time. I Meaning we, were going, we wasn't going to put them to death because we need slaves. It says, uh, the son, the son of man, the son of man presented, which is uh, Yahweh Shai, I saw in the night vision and behold, one like unto the son of man uh, came with the clouds of heaven. How do we know that this is our Lord? Acts chapter one. Two men in white, which were angels, said, why, ye, why are ye looking up, gazing into the sky the same way your Lord was taken up? He's going to come back in clouds. And these clouds represent the so-called UFOs. So it says, it says, I saw in the night vision, behold, one like unto the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, which are the ships, and came to the ancient of days, which is the Father. This is a vision, remember. And they brought him near before him and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people nations languages should serve him his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom and guess what romans 8 we are joint heirs with him that which shall not be destroyed Fifteen verse the vision interpreted I then you was grieved in my spirit and the midst of my, my body and the vision of my head troubled me. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of this, all this. So he told me and made, made me know the interpretation, interpretation of things. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings. So we know it ain't talking about no antichrist. It's talking about the Babylonian king, 
the king, the kings of the Persians and the Medes, the king of Gre Greca, and the Romans, and then the current kingdom, which is this kingdom that we're living in right now, which shall rise out of the earth. But the saints of the most are the Israelites, the body of believers, which are Israelites, starting with the elect of the most high, shall what? Take the kingdom. This king, let me look up the word kingdom. Let me look up the word kingdom. Because this, this empire, NATO, the EU, and America, and Canada, this is a kingdom. Royalty reign, kingdom, royalty, kingship, uh, kingly authority, kingship, realm of territory, reign of time. Reign of time meaning age. We're at the end of this man's age, his rulership. Um, let me come back over here. Okay, it says uh, 18 verse, but the saints of the most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and forever. The Israelites are going to be on top forever under the most High and under Yahweh and under King David. Then I will, then I would know the truth of the, of the fourth beast, which was the Roman Empire and came back again. This is the only kingdom that came back a second time. And this is getting ready to happen. Then it goes into how they took us down. So 21st verse, I beheld and, and uh, the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. That, that's in the past. That's in the past. So the key verse that I wanted out of this was 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever. The kingdom is talking about Esau's kingdom, that NATO and the EU, America and Canada, which are members of NATO, forever and ever, even forever. So vocab is telling you the Edomites have done away with. There's no more Edomites. That's bullshit. The Edomites uh, represent uh, this last beast. So the key, the key thing is we're going we're gonna to possess their kingdom. We're going to possess them. We're going to put them into captivity. Let me go to Isaiah 1st okay, 23. Oh, no, 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 I'm going to come back, go, go up a little bit further. Start at 22. This whole chapter is good. Okay, it says salvation reaches to the end of the earth. So we're on the other side of earth. It's a good, uh, great chapter. Great chapter, this whole chapter is, is great. 22nd verse, let me start at Isaiah 49 verse 22 and I'll close it. As it does say, if you howl the most high, behold, I will lift up my hand to the Gentiles, that's talking about us, and set up my standard to the people and they shall bring thy sons in their arms. So we are the people that will be lifted up by these nations, these Gentiles. And they and thy daughters shall be carried, the daughters of Israel, 
shall be carried upon their so shoulders. You know, in the ancient movies, they got the, the queen up there and the king, and they got the servants carrying them around. I said, and, and, and kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee. There it goes again with their faces toward the earth and lick up the dust of thy feet and thou shalt know that I am Yahweh. That's the kingdom. For they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. That's talking about the elect. It says, shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered? But thus saith Yahweh, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered, for I will contend with them, him that contendeth with thee, and at the most I is going to fight for us, and I will save thy children, which are the Israelites, and I will feed them that and I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh. And they shall be drunken in their own blood as with sweet wine. Now, you can read Isaiah 63. And all flesh shall know that I am Yahweh, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Because ultimately, the Mosai is only coming for Jacob. And if you're an Edomite, you're going into hardcore slavery. And there's no way of getting around it. The only thing you can hope for and pray for is that you're an Israelite. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say uh, Shalom.